Hello my friends, in this tutorial we will learn to calculate the customer refunds. Let's see first the data model and then we will go to the DAX calculations. First we will look at the tables in Excel and then we will import them in Power BI. So the first table is sales, we have the transaction ID, the date, the product ID and the number of units. Then we have the product table with the product ID and the price. And the third table refunds. Here we have the transaction ID of the original transaction and then the number of units refunded. And finally we have a column that says if the refund is complete or pending. What we want to calculate is to calculate only the refunds where we have complete in the transaction without pending. For example, this transaction tree has one complete and one pending. We do not want to calculate it. We want to calculate only where we have complete, like in the transaction two, which has only one transaction, and then in transaction four, 10 and 14, where every status is complete. We will calculate the total amount of the refund, multiplying the number of units refunded with the product price. Let's go to the Power BI model and see the tables that I have already imported. So we have here the sales table linked with the calendar table, the date, okay, product linked with product ID and the refunds linked with the sales table with the transaction ID. For now these are the initial tables and we will see step by step how we enter another table, the completed refunds, a calculated table. The final result is this matrix where we have drill down by month and by product ID the completed refunds. Okay, let's start and see step by step the solution. The first step is to create a new table, a calculated table, where we have from the refunds table the distinct transaction ID. Because you saw in the refunds table that transactions appear can appear multiple times. Okay, so here we want only the unique count of the transactions. So we get this table with only this column with this DAX formula completed refunds with all non-blank row from refunds transaction ID. Okay? Then we want to create a new column which we'll call flag which tells us if in that transaction ID we have only completed. Okay? Remember that some transactions have all also pending. For example transaction ID 3 has complete pending. So in that new table in the flag column we want to see only true where all the transactions, all the refund status is complete. If it all are complete is true. If we have one pending inside the transaction will be false. So the flag column it's a calculated column and the formula is like this. First, we create a, a variable total transactions. It's taking the refunds table, related table, because you have seen that we have also created a relationship between the new calculated table completed refunds and the refunds table. Okay, 
it's linked with the transaction ID. So now in our DEX formula we can use the related table function to get that table refounds by this relationship. Then we have the second variable total rows. It just counts the number of rows from that refounds table, from the first table, the first variable. And then we create another variable that counts the rows that have the flag complete. So how we do is we count rows, then we apply a filter in the refounds table again using the relationship and using this function related table with the condition that refound status is complete okay and we want to return the equation total rows equals complete rows if all the rows are with the flag complete this flag will return true otherwise will be false okay so the result is this for example transaction 1 is false transaction 2 is true let's go to the refounds table and see and indeed transaction 3 is false because it has one pending while transaction 2 is true because it just wa has one complete and only one and now the final step is to create the measure to calculate the refounds and how we do it now it's simple we use calculate sum x on the refounds table we multiply the number of units refounded with the product price using the related function and with the condition that the flag is true. We also have this use relationship between calendar date and refounds date. I will show you right now why is this important. You will see here that we have created also a relationship between the calendar table and the refunds table which is inactive because we cannot have uh, multiple active relationship and we use this relationship inactive relationship to calculate correctly because otherwise the solution will not be correct. I will show you right now what happens if we do not use this user relationship. I will comment this and this and now if I check it we see that the month changed because now the month is the month from the initial sales table is not the month of the refund because we do not use the relationship so now the date are no longer correct okay so this is why it, it's important to use this relationship if we put it back we get back to the correct solution. The month from this table is the month from the calendar table. Okay, it's not from the sales date or from refunds date. That's why it is important to create this inactive relationship in order to be able to drill down correctly on the month. So this is the solution. I hope you found it interesting. I will share the Power BI file in the first comment. If you liked it, please like and subscribe. Thank you.